Hello, welcome to Tony's Bonsai. We've got part two of the Urban Yamadori, the trees that I collected off Facebook Marketplace. And today I'm looking at two more, and I think these are blackthorns. Regular viewers know that I love hawthorn, and the woman actually said she had some hawthorn in the hedge. I got there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're not hawthorn. It's a bit hard to tell with no leaves on, but it looks like blackthorn to me and I really had to butcher this to get it out. I don't think it'll live, but it's worth trying. I'll place a piece of bubble wrap just to protect the trunk. And I think this, this has to go here. It's too long. And as I said, I don't believe this is going to make it, but if it does make it, there's no point having it making it with this huge root. Oh, that's a bubble wrap popping. <laughs> there we go. I can read how old this is off this. Three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, ten years old this. Ten years old. According to that root anyway. It would be a shame if it doesn't make it, but you know, it was, the, I was its only hope. Otherwise it was definitely going to die. So what I'll do next is trim it down on this, this way as well. This one can be a bit shorter. I may as well have these at different lengths. I've just put some bonsai soil in a washing up tub. This can go in there. It's got some really nice character to it, to it, character to it. The trunk here, and it goes into the two. It'd be lovely if it survives, but my success collecting blackthorn has been really, really low. I found it the hardest tree to collect, and so because of that, my optimism for this tree is very low. I'm saying, let's go 20%, I think, on this. And even that, I'm thinking, might be optimistic. But it's got a chance. It's got a puncher's chance, as they say, in the boxing game. And it's nice. And you never know. You just never know. It could just put some new roots out in the spring. It might have enough stored energy in this trunk here to, to sort of push out. And I'll give you a close-up view of it at the base. It's leaning back at a slight angle, but that's kind of the way the root base was. So, yeah, I'll put some cut paste on the top, which might help it out. Obviously, this central bit needs carving out if it makes it, but... This is just a one to see in the future, you know. Anyway, I've got a second one to get on with now that's got more, much better chance because it's got more roots out. But if you want to see how these trees do in the spring, hit that subscribe. And uh, yeah, let's get on with this next tree. The previous blackthorn was up against a wall. It was really awkward to get to and it was getting dark and that's why I couldn't get it out in many roots. But this one, I have much better access to. And it's come out with all this lovely root, which is great. I'm not exactly sure what happened there. It was a bit weird. I pressed record and uh, it, it just stopped for some reason. But anyway, it doesn't matter. All I've done is just cut these down just to get them to a more reasonable height before I start work on the roots. I've got no idea 
how far I'm going to go with these routes. I think I'm giving up saying that I'm not going to do any route work because I invariably end up doing exactly that. But I certainly want to look at the, the very base of the tree and see if we've got any good root flare or a possible, you know, a decent nabari. Same thing, but... So it does look like we've got some nice roots. I'm going to switch to a chopstick just to be a bit more gentle because it does look like we've got some excellent flare. And bearing this in mind, it makes me less inclined to go beast mode on it because it'd be such a shame if it's got a really nice base to it it would be such a shame to kill it yeah it's got an amazing fly this i'm gonna sh i'll show you a close-up of this in a moment no I, I can't go mad on this no 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 it's too nice too much potential. This is like one of those proper, proper bonsai root, root bases. And so my priority now has to be keeping this tree alive. And this is how we kind of, I think about bonsai, you know, like that last blackthorn, it's got not that much chance of making it may as well bare root it and hack it back and if it makes it it makes it if it doesn't it doesn't but a tree like this i'm sort of like you've got to protect it you've got to do everything you can to keep this alive because it's got so much potential and i've been saying for a while that, that i really wanted a nice blackthorn and i've sort of been gifted one I'll get this on the turntable now and show you up close what I'm talking about. Over on this side we can see we've got a lovely route there. This one comes across a little bit but it's not too bad. I don't mind that. And then it's even better around this other side here it comes down we've got these lovely roots coming away from the trunk and around here is the best this is the very best side i mean look at that this is like one of those old trees that you see in a park that's been there for hundreds of years so we've got an amazing nabari the only possible issue is this root here there is part of me saying that should go because it's kind of awkward. The only thing I may want to do possibly is bend that down, keep it, but sort of somehow manipulate it into a downward position. I don't know if you can do that with roots, but even kind of attaching some kind of wire and dragging it down could be an option because it's just a bit high at the moment. For the time being, I'm going to leave it though. I mean, there's, there's basically no roots attached to it either. It's going. It's going. Whoa, that's tough. That does not want to come off. Uh, I made a decision, it had to go, because it was always going to be a problem. Uh, lovely, and it's still got lovely. It's got some roots down here anyway. This one here will probably now thicken up. There's other bits and bobs of roots, there's a thick root here, so I'm okay with losing that one for the long-term style of the tree. 
YouTube work can be so much more frustrating than bonsai. I've just recorded footage again and the camera's turned off a second time. It's driving me mad. What, all, what I did is I trimmed the root ball down to get it into a washing up bowl. There was a little dead knuckle of root there that I've removed that allows this to sit further down, but I've maintained most of the root ball intact. I'm just gonna check that it's still recording. Yeah, it is. Oh, don't know why it's done that. That was a really interesting bit of footage. Anyway, it didn't record it, did it? <laughs> so, I've got my washing up bowl with some bonsai soil in the bottom. So I've placed a small pile of bonsai soil there. This just sits nicely on top. And then we've got a big gap around the edge. There's too much soil in, too much bonsai soil in there. And in fact, I'm gonna pile it up a bit around the edges, which is the opposite of what you normally do, because this is kind of sitting within it. So that's kind of like a, uh, a bowl cushioning the edges, you know, holding the edges and supporting it. So I can now take my bonsai soil and sort of kind of backfill under the, under the sod of soil or the, the massive roots. I'm frustrated that that didn't record those two sections, but I've got to remember, firstly, it's happened, so there's nothing I can do about it. And secondly, I've got the makings of an absolutely cracking <laughs> tree, which could well go on to become a superb bonsai tree in the future with that that root base there. I'll get my chopstick, just make sure that there are no air gaps. Most of the time you just prod and it's just, and then, oh there, every now and again, you hit a spot, oh, oh there it is, and it just, it just goes down, and that means there's a big cavity down there. And that's why you have to do this chopsticking sometimes. Your fingers won't do the job. And like I say, most of it's fine. But when you come to one of those cavities, if you don't fill it with the bonsai soil, that'll be air and the roots won't grow there. So there's a bit of a gap down there. See all the sort of soils disappeared. And you can just add a bit more stuff on top then to that. Yeah, that went down. So there are, there are gaps that you need to fill. I like these chopsticks that I make. I like the fat end. I like the fact that it's kind of like an oval. You don't always want this sharp end on a bonsai, on a chopstick. I like that fat end and I can also work it in line with the roots like that. I wouldn't I wouldn't use it against the roots if you know what I mean. So it's great when you when you explore a tree like this and you discover some wonderful roots and it's then just all about will it do anything in the spring? And not only do anything in the spring, because sometimes they come alive in the spring and then they die, they die in the summer. So you, you begin to see buds and you think, yes, it's made it. But those buds don't really develop into leaves and nothing really happens and it's almost like a false dawn. So that's another cracking, cracking, Nabari and potential bonsai there. Yes. Let's have a look at let's do a 360 on it. So I'd say for a free plant off Facebook Marketplace, that's not bad. That is not bad at all. 
I suspect this one's dead, as I said earlier, and that could well come off. It's got some potential, that, for the future. Fingers crossed on it, I think. Obviously, I'll keep you updated how this does in the spring and let you know whether it starts coming into bud or not. Thanks for joining me today for part two of that urban Yamadori. I really enjoyed it, as usual. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.